Hey everybody, Scott here for the Digital Guitar Playground. It's Friday, and today, ooh, like my sweater? I'll take things Alan Alda might wear for 500, Alex. No, anybody? All right. Today I'm gonna to show you my entire new G System rig that's nearly complete. I've still, uh, I'm waiting on a TC Spark Booster to round out the pedals. And it's a clean boost, but it allows you to add some gain and some EQ to your boosts. And that way I don't have to use the uh, the boost on the G system, which is actually a, uh, what do you call it? An attenuator. So you get your full on signal all the time, plus a boost, as opposed to the way the G system works is here's your boost uh, when it's not on, there it is when it's uh, enacted. So it attenuates until you hit the boost and then it comes up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I hope that made sense, shall we? Okay, let's start with the guitar. This is a reverb find, and it just so happened to be uh, located in Austin, Texas while I was living there, so I could pick it up from the guy and get the whole story behind it. Uh, he bought it secondhand, so I didn't really get the whole story, but it's a warm off body with a Mighty Mike neck, uh, four or five A flame maple top over, uh, who knows, uh, could be alder, could be ash. I can't really tell. Um, hard to say, but, uh, he didn't finish it. I might refinish it to give it some actual, you know, gloss, but who knows? I like it the way it is. It's nice and it feels comfort, comfortable. Uh, the neck is sort of slim. It's got shaler locking tuners on it. It had, it came with a compensating nut, um, and the Wilkinson bridge, which doesn't really work. It's got a defect inside that my old repair guy back in Austin, after he went over it, said uh, this thing would never work as a whammy bar. So we just clamped it down, put four spring or five springs on it, and now it's a hardtail, which I prefer. But uh, uh, I didn't like the pickups on it, so I was very curious about the David Gilmore EMGs. And this thing was already set up for a battery. I just uh, made this little Velcro thing myself that keeps it in there. So it's easy, quick out, you know, and switch. Um, yeah, the David Gilmore set, complete drop in because they were already wired in the pick guard. The uh, output jack is a plug in and it bypasses somehow the, uh, the ground on the bridge. So I can't remember where it grounds, but it grounds very well. No buzzes, no noise. At least sounds incredible. Um, I really like it. And I'm going to, it's got the, curved or uh what do you call it contoured neck joint and uh yeah five hundred dollars before i put the pickups in they were an extra 350 but you know so the guitar is kicking let's go to the g system and the rack <gasps> all right here we are over at the g system let's see what's going on with the strat one preset which is i'm using for everything at the moment I don't know that I'm going to do song specific presets um, just because with the gig that I'm trying to put together here, which is uh, me playing instrumental versions of my favorite cover songs. If you've you know followed my channel, you've seen them. They're on here somewhere. I think I did like eight of them with the uh, Y&T's drummer, Mike Vanderhuel over the past year, and uh, they turned out really cool. So, you know. I want to put together a band that can play them live, and I think that's kind of a unique thing that, uh, you know, would be fun in clubs. So, what's going on with this one? And the first thing is a ton of EQ, because I like to sculpt the sound when I play, and I am removing a ton of uh, 125 hertz, and with a pretty wide Q, and... These are kind of, honestly, kind of woofy amps if you don't uh, do some uh, some heavy-duty EQing to them. But then, when you do, they, they sound amazing. So, that's just the first. Then the second EQ, pulling down some mid-range. 
a bunch of it. Uh, slightly less wide uh, Q on that one, but just as, you know, negative 12 dB. And then a tiny bit of top end. Not a ton. Um, I'm doing most of the EQing as far as the top end goes on the amp itself by, by having the, uh, the tone control just barely on. And uh, that's what's up with that. I'm not using any compression. And uh, no filters of any kind on this particular one. I am using the modulated delays, though. And the modulation that I'm using is the classic flanger. Normally not a flanger guy. Outside of the song, She Sells Sanctuary by The Cult, I don't care for the flanger. But when it's just in the delay repeats, it's great. It just adds a fun layer of airy modulation that you don't notice, really. But it's, it's there. It's so cool. And the way to get that is to, uh, you need to be in serial two mode. So what you got to do is go over here, go to preset routing, and then set it to serial two. So you, you'll set it, then you enter, bam. Now it's always set up for that. And if you want to have a standard modulation, you need to go back to a regular serial or one of the other uh, preset routing uh, options. Semi-parallel was my favorite when running for cable method. But since I'm running into the front of these amps right out of the, right from the outputs, um, which I may, you know, try and change if I, you know, get a wild hair at my ass to uh, get a, uh, a snake with five cables on it, you know, because you need to do five cable method for two amps. But uh, I don't know. So far, this is the way I like it. But uh, I am having a little bit of some hum that I need to uh, address either with a noise gate or... Uh, uh, maybe one of those Hum X things, those EbTech little jabbies. But, you know, who knows? I am using the doubler, and I love the doubler. If you're going to have two amps, you should use the doubler. Now, uh, TC made a pedal uh, version of this called the Mimic, and I want to get my hands on one so I can try it side by side and see if it does the exact same thing. Because if it does, I might put it in a separate loop and then use the... Uh, uh, the octaver on here because I love to have some low octaves some, from time to time and you can't do that and still use the uh, the doubler so it's kind of a either or situation but uh, if the mimic actually does the exact same thing then I'll have to get my hands on one give it a shot uh, the delay which just has uh, has modulated repeats with the flanges on it is uh, 333 millisecond ping pong Going back and forth, left, right, on the, uh, the two amps. Sounds great. I love it. Uh, quite a bit of feedback. I'm cutting the low end and the, the top end because I want the, uh, the repeats to be kind of in the background. They want, I want them to float above everything else, but not with a lot of uh, high end or low end. And I'm only using 12% mix. So it's just barely there. And then the reverb, which is the uh, the final thing happening here, is a bit of a spring. And there's not really a ton of it, but uh, I have done some fun things to it, like raising the uh, pre-delay. Got to do that. And then uh, reducing the high color and the low color, although there's no bass set on this one. So that's an important setting to get it to sound the way I like it, which is having zero bottom reverb so it's an airy kind of uh, reverb but i love it that way a lot of early reflections and uh high ish reverb level and 20 percent mix so that is what i'm doing now i'm using the boost over here when you press on the boost button it is my tuner mute and then uh the button number five down here on the bottom is my boost level and it is plus 3 dB at the moment. When I get the, uh, the TC Spark Booster, I will turn that off and then I'll just set uh, loop 4, which is going to be, well, 3 or 4 will be uh, the Spark Booster. And then it'll be set to uh, switch number 5, which is where I like to have the boost. Because if I have it in the boost position, I'm always hitting number 5 along with it and fucking things up. So I need to have that in the lower right-hand corner. So I just know I can put my foot down without even looking. It's just the way I am. Would you like to hear some sounds?
There you go, everybody. Good time. New G system rig fun. Oh, I'm trying to make this work with uh, the strat. It's challenging for a guy who's used to uh, playing with humbuckers 100% of the time. And, but I really love the, uh, the feel of the strat and just, you know, the way that the tumness, uh, the dirty just, oh, it rings. It's so nice. Um, so I'm just gonna have to fight against my, uh, my humbucking nature. Embrace the strat. Hmm, good times. So I will see you on Monday with something. There's no telling what. Hopefully I'll have a, uh, a TC Spark Booster by then. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, I'm also going to put a wireless in here when, uh, uh, in sometime in January, I'm going out to California to do some more Y&T gigs, and I just got Aaron, the bass player's wireless, back from Sennheiser from repair. He's been using my wire, my Sennheiser, brand new uh, digital Sennheiser wireless, which I thoroughly enjoy, and uh, I'll mount it in the uh, in the rack. Re reconfigure the pedals so that they fit, and then uh, then we'll check that out when that happens. So, have a good weekend. I will see you on Monday. And until then, rock on. <laughs>